Uh, Joe is in Richmond. Joe, question or answer? Question, please, James. Carry on. Why are knives and forks <laughs> yeah. weighted at the handle? Every time I pick up my empty plate after I finish my food, my knife or my fork just flies off of the plate because obviously you're resting it and the handle's slightly over the edge of the plate yeah. and it's weighted, so it just falls off. Why is it not weighted at the actual fork end so that it just stays there? I think because they're designed more with eating in mind than they are with clearing the table, clearing your plates in mind, aren't they? But even in general, just sort of like, you know, I can just gently put my fork down and it'll just flop off. Whereas if it was just heavy at the actual fork end... I mean, it'd just be better all round. I reckon it'd look better. It just, it's, know, it's, an inter- it's, it's an inter- better. It's, it's an interesting enthusiasm that you've developed for differently weighted cutlery. Yeah, because well, no, it's something that really annoys me. Why does it really annoy you? When you pick your plate up, why don't you just fold your thumb over the edge of the cutlery as you take it into the kitchen and stick it in the oh, dishwasher? Because I'm just a really clumsy person, and this is just a long list of things that I do constantly. Well, don't leave it hanging off the edge of the plate, then. <laughs> Push it into the middle. No, you are right. But yeah, Why are knives and forks hand heavy hand. at the handle instead of at the head? Yeah. I, I don't know, actually. I presume it, it's easier to eat that way, but we need to speak to a, I don't know, a cutlery expert or something, don't we? Yeah, you do. Maybe someone can point me out where I can buy some that is heavy at the actual no, But it, they'll just fly off the other <laughs> side of the plate, you prune. It's not no, going to save you from cutting. It won't stay there. It's not unless, not unless it weighs about a flipping kilo or something. You've got the biggest knife and fork in the world and they smash your plate every time you pop them down at the end of your meal. There's no, there's no way you can design cutlery so that it doesn't slide off a plate when you pick it up against the balance. Yeah, but if, it, if the handle is, the handle could comfortably hang slightly over the edge then when you move the plate. What? And it, it would just stay there. <laughs> oh, well, all right, I'll see what I can do. Michael's in Gravesend. Question or answer, Michael? It's an answer, James. Carry on, mate. Um, it's the four candles um, <laughs> part, uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that at the time. Go on. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. It made me chuckle in the car. Um, yeah, now, what it is, is um, the knives and forks have to be fit for purpose. You see, with a knife, we're using a thin blade to cut through meat or whatever we're cutting through. And yes. with, with a fork, we're using prongs to pierce. Yes. Um, but with the opposite end of the cutlery, we're using the weight of our arms and hands and our strength to hold them. Yes. And to cut through that tough bit of meat or, or whatever we're cutting through. So, therefore... Yes. Um, to be fit for purpose, they need to be heavier on the other side. So, I mean, you, you, you're just giving it the straight design. That's the most optimum design. Is there not also an element of balance involved when you've got food on your fork? If it, if it was weighted at the other end, it would drop out of your hand every time. Well, there is that as well, probably. It's a ba- um, des- I mean, it, it's optimum design for balance and effective use. I mean, to, to, to get to get it as weighted on the, uh, the business end, as it were, Yes. Um, you'd have to uh, have it um, maybe crafted by a Japanese blacksmith who's going to fold the metal like 3,000 times. It'd be very hard to do. Oh, of course you're right. Yeah. Well, oh, mate, God, because you kept saying fit for purpose. I, got, I was getting, I thought you were sort of, I thought, well, I'm not going to lie to you, Michael. I thought you were slightly dodging the question, but you're not at all. How can it no, possibly be heavier at that end when there's a load less metal? It's really that simple. Is. You want teens? They're called teens, aren't they? Pardon? The prongs are called teens. T-I-G-N-E-S. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, you do now, you I'm see. I'm so much an expert in <laughs> yeah, I thought I was about to ask, what else you know about cutlery? <laughs> So, Just I've been using it for 35 years. So have I! It's such a small world! <laughs> Qualifications? Uh, I've been using cutlery for 35 yeah, years. There you go, then. Give them a round of applause. Of course it's going to be lighter at the other end because there's a lot less metal because you've had to make it thinner so that you can cut stuff. You de- oh, I can't believe we... Well, um, yeah, I've, I've learned from school um, for years that when you go down to sand, it was originally pebbles that the, the sea had actually ground down over thousands of years. Well, I went to the Isle of Wight and I found a beach that one half of it was pebbles.